Peeps, Kenny Molotov here in the studio and I wanted to talk to you all today about the five hardest parts of your plumbing apprenticeship. I'm Kenny Molotov, licensed plumber, professional magician, and entertainer. On this channel, I go through the ins and outs of my career in plumbing. I take you through a day in the life and we talk tools, theory, and mindset. I'm trying to give you an arsenal of knowledge and an online resource so you can take this trade head on and find yourself successful on the other end. Click subscribe, hit that bell notification, and let's talk pipes. So peeps, a lot of you are now just trying to get your foot in the door and you're trying to figure out your apprenticeship and you're worried about things that might happen in the near future and you're wondering what sort of obstacles that you're gonna have to face. So I'm here to try to let you know what they are and alleviate some of that anxiety if you are feeling it or just curiosity if that's how it manifests in you. And here is my top five list of what was hardest for me. And we're gonna start with the first one which wasn't an actual hurdle for myself but a hurdle for most people. A lot of people find that the very first thing that's the hardest for them is actually finding an apprenticeship. You see there are a lot of plumbing companies out there and all of them have the same request in mind which is I want a third or fourth year apprentice. And this is really the frustrating part about this entire process. You're essentially trying to ask the question, how do you expect me to be a third or fourth year apprentice if you don't start me off? That is the biggest question in mind and that's the most frustrating so you have to have a little bit of luck to find that one company that's in the right position for you for your entrance into the trade it takes a little bit of work for people to try to get their foot in the door and it's a lot of knocking on doors it's a lot of constantly calling checking in making sure that no openings have taken place a lot of times it's signing up with companies just as a laborer so that you are there you're doing the plumbing but you're not getting the hours currently. The good thing about that situation here in Ontario, Canada is that if you can prove with pay stubs that you've worked the hours, you could actually use those hours towards your apprenticeship in the future. So that's something that's good. And hopefully where you live, it's the same sort of situation. But that's the hardest part at the beginning, just getting your foot in the door. The second hardest part for a lot of people in their apprenticeship is officially getting their hands on the tools. And this is something that I experienced experience firsthand part in the pun. The real difficulty in starting the trade is that everybody knows that you're green and everybody is trying to avoid you getting your hands on the tools because a lot of the times people are charging by the hour. So my dad used to make this argument all the time. He goes, I cannot allow you to just go ahead and take over the job if I'm charging that customer who's watching us at that job site by the hour because the customer's going to go, are you trying to rip me off by getting somebody who does something at half the pace or an eighth of the pace to do the work. So there is some truth to that, but the hard part is, is swallowing that truth. You know what I mean? So that's something you have to keep in mind. It does get really difficult, but you need to know that there's light at the end of the tunnel. Eventually you will get your hands on the tools. Eventually you will have the skills you require to go ahead and do the work. So you just need to learn patience and to constantly remind yourself watching is also learning. Even though it's passive learning, I know, and it's agitating because I know you want to start your career. You just got to learn that sometimes you're going to be able to get your hands on the tools and work on a project. And a lot of times you're just going to have to watch at the beginning. The third hardest thing for me during the apprenticeship was officially getting into that gray area of I'm good enough, but am I ready to go to a job site by myself? This is a pretty big one. And a lot of people have a little bit of a hard transitional phase at this moment in time because you have the skills. It's just they're not honed as well as your journey person skills are and you know this. You're at that point where it's like you have like a conscious competence going on which is like you're aware of what you're good at and you're aware of what you're not good at at the same time. So it's a little bit tricky and you're trying to tread those waters carefully. So even when customers are asking you questions, you're trying to make sure that you're providing the best knowledge as possible. Possible. This is a little
little bit difficult, I have to be honest. There's a lot of anxiety for me around this situation at this point in my career, especially if there was a customer standing over your shoulder. That's something you're gonna have to cope with at some point, by the way. You're gonna have to learn that some people just enjoy watching others work. So there are gonna be some customers that just sit down behind you and watch you work, not because they're trying to be nosy or anything like that, but they just sometimes they just want to be around the situation. They want to provide company to the person there. And then every once in a while, you're going to have a customer over your shoulder for that purpose that we're all worried about, which is they're worried that you don't know what you're doing. So you're trying to balance all these variables all at once, and you're trying to figure that out. And that's understandable. It happens. But remember, again, everything comes with experience. Eventually, I got to the point where I didn't care if customers were around me because I've done this thing so many times that I know what I'm going to run into. And if I do run into something bad, it's nothing that scares me anymore. I remember I used to hate having to sweat something out if there was water still in the line and the customers behind me try to solder something or sweat something out with water in the line. And all you can do really is boil that water out or cut it in a place that drains it until it actually comes out. But at the beginning, I was really nervous. I'd be thinking to myself, man, do they think I know nothing because of the situation that's occurring right now? So all that plays a big role in learning. And eventually you get comfortable enough to be able to work in front of a customer and work without a journey person standing next to you to the point where you are the journey person on the job site doing the work. The fourth hardest thing for me during plumbing was actually plumbing school. And here's what I have to say about that. I, I did pretty well in plumbing school. I have a big history in academia. I, I did get a university degree. So being in a classroom is something I'm comfortable with, but there is a huge huge difference that I found between plumbing school and going to university and doing a degree and it was this. You are really packing in a lot of information within eight weeks and your ability to do well has a lot to do with your ability to retain things. So every single Friday we would have a test at the end of the week from whatever you learned during the week. So this was difficult. Now I don't want to scare you all from plumbing school because it was a great experience and the teachers are typically really great. They do slow down and they break things down for you, which make the process so much easier. But I did find it difficult because it was completely different from being on a job site. They are literally two separate, different skills that you need to acquire in order to do well. You have an entirely different set of skills for the classroom than you do on the job site. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna have to learn how to balance those hand in hand. And what's really interesting is meeting people that are really good at one and not so good at the other. Sometimes you'll meet plumbing students that are exceptional at plumbing theory that really can blow you out of the water with their knowledge. And then when you get onto the job site, you notice that they are not good with the tools whatsoever and vice versa. You meet wizards on the job site that cannot sit in a classroom. It drives them bonkers. And that's something really interesting to witness firsthand. And you learn to appreciate everybody's strengths and weaknesses at the same time. And the fifth hardest thing about doing your apprenticeship, or at least it was for me, was trying to balance the relationship between the journey person and the apprentice. You see, at some point, you're going to have enough knowledge to be able to go onto a job site to know how to deal with a certain problem or figure out a certain solution to a certain problem. And a lot of times what will end up occurring is that you and your journey person will not agree upon something, not because one is more right than the other, but because the journey person has one way of doing it and you have an entirely different way of doing it, but you're both solving the same problem. This is a really difficult situation, by the way. This is something that still kicks our butts to this day, and I'm talking in between my father and I. The problem is, is that both of you have a solution, and both of those solutions might work. What's to say one is better than the other? It really depends on what is more important than the other. Sometimes your solution will be to make sure that money is not an issue. So you'll solve a problem a certain way, where you'll use the fittings that you currently have that are code, but may not be as what your journey person is telling you. Or one of your solutions might lean towards doing something faster. So you're saving money on speed, in which case you might use more fittings so that you can get the job done. And your journey person will turn to you and say, no, cost is an issue. It's something I don't want. So it's constantly trying to figure out, man, do I have the right to say something? Do I have the right to still push for uh, my way of solving the issue? Or, you know, you're trying to figure out what's the right way, what's the wrong way, whether you've trespassed on your
your boundaries, whether it's reasonable for you to actually be saying what you're saying. I mean, it's a really, really complicated issue. It's got a lot of layers to it, unfortunately. And it's something that, like I said, I still work on to this day, but it is something you gotta keep in mind. There is a dynamic between the senior plumber and the non -so not so senior plumber that, you know, you're constantly trying to figure out how much territory do you have. Really weird kind of unspoken dance that's occurring. So peeps, those were my five hardest parts of my apprenticeship. Let me know down in the comments below if there's anything that I didn't bring up that you might have struggled with. Like, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you guys very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.